If you stop a random group of people on the streets and ask them to describe what poverty means to them, you'll hear a lot of different answers. A little girl might say, it's not having enough food to eat. Another person might say, it's barely getting by. While someone else might say, it's living in the streets. And so forth are answers you might hear. If you haven't lived in poverty, you wouldn't know how it feels. You wouldn't know how circumstances can quickly change or how an environment can easily propagate one into poverty. People born into poverty or by circumstances become hopeless for any kind of escape. And for those who don't want to endure poverty, will find a way to escape it. So in today's video, we bring you the best ways, backed by research, that a person can escape poverty or avoid it altogether. 1. Education the right education is the most significant poverty eradication tool you have. Always crave to be knowledgeable. The less you know, the more susceptible you are to be taken advantage of. And you don't want anyone to do that, believe me. They say education is the key to success for a reason, and it's the key you'll need for this fight. Most importantly, make sure you understand financial literacy. Most schools don't provide a financial literacy foundation, so you have to learn it somewhere else or by yourself. Learn in depth about financial products, and most importantly, your rights. Learn about the whole credit world, financial markets, personal finance, credit scores, a financial statement, and so on. All this knowledge will set you ahead of most people, and it will help you save more, and will also open your eyes to which deals are the best for you. With this knowledge, you'll be able to identify scams that could ruin your financial world. No one can take advantage of you if you know how things work in the world. And that's why education is empowering. Arm yourself with knowledge, because one day, it'll be your best defense. 2. Develop skills At the core of it, poverty is defined as a lack of money, but it's also deeply associated with a lack of skill. To escape poverty, learning a relevant skill is among the best strategies you can implement. Learn a skill that people will want to pay for. Numerous free resources can help you develop and be great at the skills you want. You can learn from your local carpenter, shoemaker, mechanic, and other trades. You can also learn from books in the internet to be good at design, programming, marketing, etc. Doing decent work will be the stepping stone in this journey. With the right mindset, you'll earn a simple living, which will boost your confidence, and you'll be proud of yourself and how far you've come. When you master that skill, learn more on the job and be the best in your community. Be that person that everyone wants to work with and maybe eventually work for. Use your skills to make a living and add value to yourself by always looking for what's next. Always seek growth and never get comfortable. Okay, so I'd like you to do something for me. Pause this video right now and do me a huge favor by hitting the like button. If you did, you're awesome and thank you so much for your support. 3. Learn to sell Making sales is the basis for everything in this world. The fact that the New York Times ranks the best books as the best-selling authors, not the best-written authors, should tickle your brain. If you can master the skill of selling, you'll make a lot of money in this world. The highest-paid career in the world is sales. Most of the richest people in the world are best at selling. They sell their vision, they sell their products, they sell their services, and they sell their skills. You have to master the art of selling. The beauty about this skill is that anyone can learn it, and you don't need a fancy education or a special ability either. Anyone can learn it. You can start small, for example, selling something to your neighbors, families, friends, strangers, and eventually you'll master the best sales skills and approaches that will allow you to easily sell whatever it is at your local supermarket or a big organization. You can even create your franchise and sell internationally. There is no limit to selling. Our whole world operates on the principle of buying and selling. 4. Mind Control the right mindset is not easy for everyone to have. The opinions and ideas that we have are most of the time not originally ours. We either adopt them from our environment and develop them in our minds. Our environment can be that of poverty, and what our peers say, do, and think is what our minds will believe as our own opinions. Social media, radios, televisions, all these give our minds suggestions on what opinions to hold. They even make us buy more things than we had previously planned on. It's like going to the supermarket or food shop hungry. You see all kinds of foods displayed, and you end up getting way more than you needed. Or the famous pyramid schemes that make people believe that they can earn money faster by putting in a little. They end up losing it all. What am I trying to say? Our minds can be swayed. Our opinions are not our own. 
You'll spend all your time, money, energy, deeply invested in somebody else's ideals that are not benefiting you one bit. Take control of your mind. You might have been born into poverty, but you won't want your own family born into the same. Your mind is of value and treat it like that. Take control of your mind and what you feed it. Be able to decipher your own opinions for what's best for you and how best to improve your situation. Take up activities that inspire you to dream and realize your goals. Your mind will lead you to partake in incredibly productive actions if you feed it right. So please do. 5. Entitlement In the world we live in, nothing comes easy. The systemic idea of educational progression is not how it was back then. Back then, professions were supported by higher learning institutions. They would even pay for your higher education. What the market needed at the time is what they would take you to school to study for. Soon enough, there were too many people with higher education and it was all saturated. You now have to add other things to get a good job. When you've studied so hard, passed through all hardships, don't have expectations. You can't be handed that job just because you scored higher marks. There will be no special treatment because people are selfish. People are dealing with their problems and for sure, you don't cross their minds. Don't be entitled to getting things just because you come from poverty or even suffered adversity. Learn the hard work. Take that entry-level position or that first job that you might think is below you and lay that foundation for yourself. No one will do it for you. The world is competitive and you have to have the drive to pull through to get where you want. Nothing is handed to anyone anymore. 6. Community Resources Community resources are a marvel for knowledge and opportunities. Local communities like churches, public libraries, local NGOs, community centers are some of the places that can uplift your situation. It's empirical to take advantage of what is being offered. If it's an art center, there can come a time where an opportunity arises, and since you're associated with the community group, you can have a shot at it. These community projects and organizations offer programs that help you become self-reliant. There can be training, workshops, one-on-one -on -one coaching, financial literacy, and a space to share your skills and talents. If help is coming from the government or international NGOs, they usually reach out to community outreach groups and programs, which touch down to people on the ground. I see these as opportunities you shouldn't miss. From these community resources, you can get scholarships, jobs, build networks, develop your craft, recognition of your talents, and so forth. This is the one opportunity you've always wanted, and you shouldn't miss it. 7. Get Professional With the skills you have, you need to set yourself apart from what others in the same field offer. The clients you get are there for you to service them, and not because they need to help you get out of poverty. You as a person with a product or service, you're solving a problem for your clients, and that's why they hire you or work with your products or skills. As you go about your business, don't offer mediocrity and nonchalant services. Don't leave your client with a distaste for the service you've provided. Keep in mind that people want to be treated well and want the best results out of everything. You have to focus on helping them get exactly what they want for you to get what you want. Treat your work as your baby. You'll need those referrals from your clients to make your business thrive. You'll need those networks to work with other people that can give you the first call when an opportunity arises. You need to be building bridges professionally. Work on your work relationships and go professional. You'll be amazed at how much positive word of mouth will help your business. 8. Out with the poor masses No one chooses where they're born and what they're born into. But it doesn't mean that if you're born in poverty, you have to remain there. You'll want to be out of your situation and it will be very selfish to remain poor. There are limitless resources and knowledge available to escape poverty. To help the poor is to first of all not be one of them. If you use whatever means to get out of poverty, you've reduced the number of people in poverty. I don't mean by yourself, I mean that if you get out and use your skills to get a simple living, that uplifts you. You then automatically uplift your close relationships and family, getting them out of poverty. So it's really important that if you have the platform to use your talent and skills to make something out of yourself, you use it without fail. Poverty has a lot of mental baggage. If you're tasting success, you can't still identify yourself as poor. Get rid of those labels that are linked to poverty from your mind and your lips. Surround yourself with people of your peers and progressive people. And don't be referring to yourself as the poor masses. You did what you had to do and what you've never done before to get what you didn't have and you should be proud of that. 9. In with success First of all, you can't become what you hate. People living in poverty see wealthy people as selfish. 
What you need to know is that everyone is selfish. It's our natural tendency. When living in poverty, you associate yourself with humility, which definitively masks your true desire. You desire to be progressive, and when you see progressive people, don't think that they're all antagonists. This doesn't apply to everyone, since some rich and progressive people are very greedy, selfish and oppressive. To understand all this, think about human nature. Everyone always wants to know what they're getting from something, whether it's your relationship, your job, you name it. What's in it for them? It's the basis of any if not all relationships. With this at the back of your mind, think about what people want and how you can offer them exactly that. When you focus on providing for what people want, you'll be setting yourself up to receive what you want. That's how you become successful. Let your mind be in a progressive and successful space and see how much you can do to get what you want and escape poverty. It doesn't hurt to try to escape a situation you don't want to be in. Many people are running away from something because they want to be in control of their lives. They don't want a situation to control them. If this is your thinking, you'll do whatever it takes to get yourself out. However little, however small, the first thing to do is try. Thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe for more content like this. With that said, have a great day you guys and I'll see you all in the next one.